The UNDP JEF CLME Plus project executed by UNOPS is an initiative to catalyze the implementation of the 10-year politically endorsed strategic action program for the sustainable management of the shared living marine resources of the Caribbean and North Brazil Shelf Large Marine Ecosystems CLME Plus SAP. The project seeks to achieve this by facilitating ecosystem-based management and ecosystem approach to fisheries within the CLME Plus region. This initiative works with various stakeholders including countries, IGOs, NGOs, and academia for its execution, and it is built in five components that aim to address crucial matters for the sustainable development of the region. Governance, capacity building, on the ground activities and much more has been the focus of this past six years and this video will show you from our partners perspective how we did it The first component focuses on the theme of governance. Through the CLME Plus project, the region sought to put in place mechanisms to strengthen its approach to governing its coastal and marine resources at the national and regional levels and also across sectors. Since the establishment of the UNEP Cartagena Convention Secretariat in 1986, we have supported pollution prevention and marine biodiversity protection. In 2016, with support from the CLME Plus project, the Secretariat convened its first joint scientific and technical advisory committee meeting for our marine biodiversity and pollution protocols. This enabled governments to identify common priorities and agree on joint solutions. A roadmap for collaboration between the two protocols was developed and has been incorporated into the new strategy for the Convention. The success of this integration has led to integrated meetings of our Conference of Parties. Regional cooperation is a fundamental requirement for their effective management and long-term sustainability. It is not surprising, therefore, that over the past 50 years, Caribbean countries have established three regional fisheries bodies, WACAFC, CRFM, and OSPESCA, as mechanisms to facilitate cooperation in addressing transboundary fisheries matters. The CLME plus SAP recognize that for these fisheries bodies to be successful, they must work together and coordinate their actions. The project therefore supported the establishment of a fisheries interim coordinating mechanism, which was formalized in January of 2016 by an MOU signed by the three RFBs. In the absence of an overarching regional integration mechanism, Efforts have been underway for over two decades by the countries, regional intergovernmental organizations, including UN organizations in the wider Caribbean region, to develop an integrated regional approach to governing, share living marine resources, and to develop a regional mechanism with the mandate to coordinate and integrate existing and new regional and sub-regional arrangements to operationalize a truly ecosystem-based management approach to ocean governance. In 2017, CMA Plus countries and organizations established an interim coordination mechanism for strengthening and consolidating regional coordination and cooperation through an implementation of the endorsed CMA Plus strategic action program and to support oversight and integration of actions for sustainable fisheries and the protection and sustainable use of the marine environment.
The CLME Plus SAP also calls for the creation of a coordination mechanism to support integrated ocean governance through enhanced collaboration among countries and organizations in the CLME Plus region. The project has supported the region with the advancement of this coordination mechanism. Recommendations from two consultations convened in the past two years in relation to the proposed mandate functions and structure were considered by the PSC during its June 2020 meeting. The PSC also, for the most part, supported the use of a non-binding Memorandum of Understanding to create the coordination mechanism. A draft MOU was also considered during a steering committee meeting in October 2020, with negotiations expected to be finalized in early 2021. The region will then begin preparations for the commencement of the MOU. We recognize that putting in place certain frameworks to strengthen governance is only one aspect towards achieving improved governance of our marine and coastal resources. Other measures need to be put in place, including enhancing the capacity of our countries and regional organizations to successfully maintain this governance infrastructure. In light of this, Component 2 of the CLME Plus project sought to enhance institutional and stakeholder capacity required to support improved management of the region's marine and coastal resources. This was achieved by a number of means, including the following. The Cartagena Convention Secretariat developed a regional nutrient pollution reduction strategy and action plan, as well as a regional strategy and action plan for the evaluation, protection, and restoration of key marine habitats. These strategies aim to strengthen national and collective action by member states to manage the use of coastal ecosystems, particularly mangroves, seagrass beds, and coral reefs. This will maintain the integrity of these habitats and ensure the continued provision of ecosystem goods and services. This includes a specific focus on addressing the major sources of excessive nutrients impacting on these ecosystems, for example, from sewage, agrochemical runoff, and air pollution. Both strategies identify strategic pillars, such as the importance of ecosystems health and resilience sustainable use, governance, partnerships, policy, institutional and regulatory frameworks, and capacity building and training needs. I wish to share a successful experience of WCAPC in a joint delivery ball for the CLME Plus project. This is the regional plan of action to prevent, deter, and eliminate IUU fishing in North the region. This 10-year RPOA IUU was overwhelmingly endorsed at the 17th session of the Commission in 2019. It is centered around four main aspects. Policy and legal framework, operations and MCS related actions, information exchange and cooperation at the regional level, last but not least, capacity development. We look forward in a follow up action to CLME Plus, collaborate for the implementation of the RPOA IUU in the WCAC region. Under the CLME Plus project, Canary worked with civil society and fisherfolk organizations and community enterprises to develop people managing oceans. This is a civil society action program about how civil society across the Caribbean and North Brazil shelf can contribute to achieving a healthy marine environment that provides benefits and livelihoods for the well-being of people of the region. It will help to deliver the politically endorsed 10-year strategic action program. 
People Managing Oceans has already been endorsed by 49 civil society organizations across the region. Canary also worked with 16 donors to develop a roadmap for a small grant coordination mechanism to support civil society in implementing people managing oceans. The Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute was engaged as part of the CLME Plus project to develop a research strategy to identify research priorities that bridge science and policy to assist decision makers in achieving effective ocean governance. The research strategy focused on three main areas of focus, fisheries including spiny lobster, flying fish, and shrimp and ground fish, sustainable habitats, and pollution reduction and mitigation. GCFI took a holistic approach by examining not only the science that would be necessary for each of those three areas of focus, but also the research needed to achieve effective governance, research into developing effective communications approaches, identifying monitoring priorities that ensure strategies are effective, and the research needed to ensure economic sustainability for stakeholders. Decision makers scored the research topics for each of the three areas of focus and the five things to identify their priorities at the nexus of science and policy. Component 3 of the CLME Plus project demonstrates the ecosystem approach to fisheries and ecosystem-based management, two important principles of the project. The subprojects under this component work towards progressive reduction of environmental stresses and in enhancing livelihoods of coastal communities. This were achieved through the following four initiatives. The result of the subproject Enfoque Ecosistémico for the Pesca de la Langosta Espinosa del Caribe in su conjunto permiten establecer el alcance de los objetivos al contar con mejores disposiciones de coordinación regional e intersectorial para el manejo sostenible de las poblaciones de la langosta del Caribe, la capacidad de los actores en la implementación del ciclo de políticas, la reducción del estrés sobre el recurso mediante acciones en campo y mostrando un progreso en la implementación del enfoque ecosistémico a través de mejores prácticas en función de las lecciones aprendidas. Para ello, se cuenta con un reglamento regional actualizado para el ordenamiento de la pesquería de la langosta del Caribe, la revisión de las normas y la ejecución de planes nacionales, un plan de manejo en la región del Caribe, una metodología estándar de colecta de datos y evaluación de stocks, fortalecía la capacidad de monitoreo y control, así como un estándar de trazabilidad para productos acuícolas y pesqueros con énfasis en la langosta. The activities of the Flying Fish Subproject responded to the CLME Strategic Action Program Subaction 5.1A on the Flying Fish Fisheries. The activities and the individual outputs of the subproject all contributed to two major products a revised sub regional fishery management plan for flying fish with a brand logo in support of continuity, and a draft cooperation agreement between the CRFM and the French territories that utilized the Eastern Caribbean flying fish stock. The subproject team sourced additional co-finding from Global Affairs of Canada to develop and begin the process of implementing a gender strategy for the CRFM based on the gender analysis strategy and action plan developed by this gender mainstream initiative. Five member states, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago were supported in drafting national gender action plans that are to be carried through their national adoption processes. Another initiative which focused along the North Brazil shelf was the transition to ecosystem-based management in three countries, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, and Guyana. These countries developed and tested various governance arrangements to enable effective ecosystem-based management of mangroves and wetlands. Some of the key achievements included one, 
development of a new oceans governance framework for Suriname. Two, the members in data collection and field analysis in Guyana. And three, assessment of pollution sources and loading into the Karani mangrove in Trinidad and Tobago. With the success of this intervention, much more is now required. The Secretariat has mobilized resources through a new European Union funded African, Caribbean and Pacific region project to continue support specifically for Guyana and Suriname and we commit to continue to promote such EBM approaches in the rest of the region. Canary supported two small grant projects on CMAS farming as a sustainable livelihood under the CLME Plus project. The Liamiga CMOS Group in St. Kitts used its U.S. $17,500 grant to establish six new CMOS plots with support from the Department of Marine Resources, and they also constructed a new processing facility. They took key steps to improve the quality assurance of the CMOS drink products, including by getting their products tested at the Bureau of Standards and constructing a drying house to improve drying of their CMOS. Members were trained in marketing and value-added processing of ice cream, granola bars, cake, fudge, ice pops, and poncho cuba. Three members also participated in a pay exchange visit to St. Lucia to learn about the cultivation, processing, and marketing of CMOS. Component 4 seeks to continue some of the initiatives implemented under Component 3 about the transition to EAF and EVM as well as to implement some of the actions outlined under the strategies and action plans. In light of this, the project supported the development of an investment plan to address nutrient reduction and habitat restoration. The Cartagena Convention Secretariat and the Ocean Foundation develop a baseline and prefeasibility assessment and investment plan for large-scale action on habitat protection and pollution prevention. A key aspect of this component was the development of a habitat restoration site prioritization methodology. This list of high priority sites guided the development of replicable models for investment plans that utilize a blended finance approach to habitat restoration and conservation and pollution prevention. The wider application of the methodology will help define strategic actions and future investment opportunities that restore and protect coastal ecosystems, reduce pollution stressors, increase resilience, to climate change and maximize our new blue economy opportunities. Rolled into component five was the effort to enhance knowledge exchange between all stakeholders and the development of common approaches for improved joint monitoring and assessment of the CLME plus SAP. The principal knowledge exchange enhancement was the creation of the CLME Plus Hub, which is serving as a regional platform to harness knowledge and showcase numerous tools such as a regional projects database that facilitates the identification of opportunities for collaboration between the various existing and upcoming initiatives, a regional documents library with over 700 entries generated by a variety of organizations and projects, a training portal for those seeking educational opportunities, and a contacts database of marine stakeholders where the roles of individuals in the various projects, IGOs, and working groups can be found, among other things. All of these tools are live and ready for your use on the CLME Plus Hub at clmeplus.org. As for the development of common approaches for improved joint monitoring and assessment, 
the project created the CLMA Plus SAP tracking portal to evaluate the collaborative progress made towards implementing the 10-year SAP. Linked to this joint monitoring approach and called for by the SAP is the development of a collaborative long-term reporting and decision support mechanism on the state of the marine environment and associated economies, referred to as SOMI for short. Through improved monitoring and reporting, the SOMI will help the region protect its marine natural capital to support blue socioeconomic development. A phased approach was undertaken for the development of SOMI, and under the CLME Plus project, a first prototype partial SOMI was developed, and which resulted in the delivery of key SOMI building blocks, such as the first ever State of the Convention Area reports, on land based sources of pollution, and on coastal and marine habitats. With the negotiations on the creation of a regional ocean coordination mechanism approaching closure, it is anticipated that the first fully integrated SOMI report will be produced with the support of a new UNDP GEF project that would give continuity to the CLME Plus initiative, including SOMI. As you have seen and heard, the CLME Plus project has lived up to its title and catalyze the implementation of actions defined under the politically endorsed CLME Plus app. These include the creation of two interim mechanisms, the development of our research agenda, and facilitating the preparation of data and information products, all to support enhanced marine and coastal management within the CLME Plus region. The project, through a number of its outputs, has also supported the implementation of ecosystem-based management and the ecosystem approach to fisheries in an effort to find a good balance between the enhancement of livelihoods and the protection of living marine resources. We extend a big thank you to all who made this project a success. UNDP is proud to have worked with this region for the last 12 years in the area of ocean and marine management and looks forward to establishing, strengthening, and new partnerships with the continuation of the CLME Plus initiative under the new project. <laughs>